Here are nine life lessons that will solve so many of the problems that you are currently going through. The first one, how bad does your situation have to get for you to change it? I think a lot of times when we think about life and we think about changing our life, we look at it as something of optimism, something of changing our life and going forward. And it looks so pretty and it looks so amazing. But a lot of times we don't realize what actually makes you change is the bad things. What actually makes you want to go forward is because as you've gotten in a situation that's so bad that you can no longer deal with that anymore. You're struggling so bad that you no longer can live like that. And so I want to ask you, how bad does your situation have to get in order for you to change, in order for you to move forward? A great example of this is that they did a study on mice, right, or rats. And um, they put them inside of this machine or whatever, and they put a they put a string on their tail. And the string was to get the tension, to figure out how hard were they pulling. And so they put the scent of like cheese or something like that that they would want in front of them. And so they got the tension on that, you know, to figure out, okay, how hard, you know, going at that thing that they want, the cheese, the achievement, the how hard are they going? But then from the back, they did another study and they did the scent of a cat. Now, of course, mice are afraid of cats because cats eat them. Then they realized the tension went up crazy so wait when they had the, the thing that they wanted in front of them they kind of went hard but not that hard but when they got in a bad situation of being scared that's when they finally decided to turn it up that's you you create the vision boards you create these these ideas in your mind of the things that you want to do with your life and a life that you want to have for yourself but the problem is you never go after it because you're similar to the rat with the cheese that's your cheese but what is what is your cat Oh, your cat is your landlord telling you you have to move out in a month. Your cat is your car breaking down on you and your job telling you if you're late one more time, you're going to get fired. But there were things that were leading up to that because you knew two months ago that you might be late on your rent the next month. You knew three months ago that your car was acting up. But now that you're in a position of having to do things and needing to do things, now you want to change it. So I want to ask you. For the people that are waiting to change, how bad does your situation have to get in order for you to change, in order for you to do something differently? How close does that cat have to get to you in order for you to start going harder after the life that you want for yourself? The next one. The life you want is on the other side of a few hard conversations and you're living a life you hate because you're too afraid to have them. One of the things I had to realize is that this affected my life in two ways. It affected my life inward and actually outward. See, the life that I wanted for myself, I realized, kind of going back to the earlier analogy, the reason why it took me so long and it waited for me to get to a bad situation or a worse situation to actually want to change is because I wasn't having those conversations with ourselves. I talk about it all the time, but social media allows us, our phones, these devices allow us to not think about what we're going through. It's so easy to have a stressful day at work and scroll on social media and feel like ah I'm free you're not free of anything mentally you are stalled but you are not free of the situation that you are going through and I realized the life that I wanted was on the other side of the hard conversations whether they were with myself or whether they're with other people and that's why I say in a lot of my videos, y'all need to journal. That's why I say in a lot of my videos, you need to limit your social media consumption. You need to spend more time with yourself every time we're doing something. And I've said it in my videos before too, so I'm not going to make it seem like I've never said this before. But, you know, when you're going to the gym, when you're cleaning, it's easier to do things such as putting on a podcast and listening to a video. And of course, me being a content creator, I would love for you guys to watch my videos, you know, listen to my content while you're doing those things. But also I had to realize for myself, I need to do things in silence. Like I need to be able to clean my room with just my thoughts. I don't think we realize how scary our thoughts are to us because we have so many opportunities to not be inside of them, to not think of them. Your thoughts are a scary place. Because you have to be honest with yourself, because you have to be combative, because you have to have conversations about things that were in the back of your mind that are gnawing at you that you don't want to have. And so I realized that for myself, the life I wanted was on the side of the harder community conversations when I really sat down myself and said Shemaya what's going on Shemaya what are we dealing with Shemaya you wrote this in your journal two months ago and you still going through this okay what we gonna do now 
Because it's one thing to just say those things. It's one thing to just let it out. But it's one thing to also have a real conversation about how you're going to get through it. Because it's obviously a problem before it gets to be a worse problem. But then also with people, a lot of times too, with people, we're scared to have certain conversations. Whether it's with a, someone that we're in a relationship with. Whether it's with, you know, a, a friend. Whether it's with a parent. We're afraid to have these hard conversations. And so we do our best to avoid them. We often become people pleasers. We often don't have boundaries. It's so many things that we do not do because we don't want it to be an awkward conversation. We don't don't want to tell someone how they're bothering us we don't want to and we don't realize the life that you want to live of not dealing with that thing anymore is not going to happen until you come head to head with that thing and have those hard conversations with yourself and with others the next one you need to upgrade your life the same way you update your phone oh you need to update your phone the same way you update your life i realized this for myself because it's so easy to get into the string of things, especially once we get out of school. In school, we have this thing of kind of upgrading. You go from one grade to the next, you go from one class to the next, and there's this continuous thing of updating new information. And you're using the old information that you learned when you were younger to use the new information, right? Before they taught you multiplication, they taught you addition. Before they taught you calculus, they taught you multiplication. The whole idea is to continuously update yourself as time goes on. But once we get into the routine of things and become an adult, we no longer update ourselves. We no longer feel like we have to because simply this is just our life, right? We're just going to work this job for the rest of our life and live this life. No, you need to update your life. And that is a, in a plethora of things, right? Usually the updates, you can figure out where you first need to update, where you can feel like your life is lagging in, the things that you are having complaints about, the things that you aren't necessarily too comfortable with. And then once you start updating those things, that's when you can start updating the things that you want to do more so for, for preference. So an idea of this is the things that are lagging on you, right? Maybe you're in a neighborhood and you're like, this is an unsafe neighborhood. That's something that's laggy. That's something that is dealing with your mental health. That's something that's making you not comfortable. And that's going to lead to other things. Maybe it's a situation, like I said before, of you being late on your rent. That's a situation you need to figure out now, right? That's an update you need to do to figure out how to do that thing, right? And the update comes from going to the root of it. Okay, I'm late on my rent. Why am I late on my rent? Because I don't make enough money. Why do I not make enough money? Because I am not tell you all the time valuable enough to work a job that will pay me more okay so the root of you being late on your rent is you not being valuable enough to make more money you haven't done enough whether it's got certain certifications whether it's worked long enough whether it's um went to school whatever the case may be for the field that you want to be in you aren't valuable enough to afford where you're living so then that causes conversations are we going to go back and live with our parents? Are we just going to live in a different neighborhood? Or are we going to do something to make us of more value so we can get paid more? Right? That's the update you need to do in that area. Because the problem is, going, going back to the beginning of the update, once you don't update certain things, such as your knowledge, such as your value, such as the information that you have, you're not going to make more. I say this in all my videos. America, the way it runs is you get paid based on your value. So if you want to get paid more, you need to be able to do more things that other people cannot do. You need to, i.e., make yourself more valuable. Now, what's the cause of that? The cause, or the effect, I should say, after, is you not being valuable, so now you can't pay your rent, right? It's similar to a computer, similar to a phone, right? If you do not update an app, what's the app gonna start doing? It's gonna start lagging. So then when you post your pictures, your pictures aren't gonna post as, bad, as good as everyone else. Your pictures might be a little pixelated or blurry. Now you can't get the same updates that everyone else can get and they can do the new features. But what is the root of it? The root of it is you did not update that app. Going back to why you can't afford your rent. The root of it is you haven't updated your knowledge. You haven't updated your value. So you have to think about it in that way. And then once you have the things that you you do want to you 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 have to update, then we can go into the things that we we want to update. And I usually think of those things such as, you know, um, our bodies or maybe our cars. Right. I want to start getting a certain body. I want to drive a certain car. I wanna, the, those are the things that you already have the basics. So now you can do more. 
right? So the first thing is more so of a, the first analogy I gave you of not being able to afford your rent. That's more so like you need to update the phone. The phone needs to update. Then once you update your phone, that's when you can update a specific app. But the problem is we live our life trying to update apps, right? You're trying to update every single app so the app works well. And you're still trying to figure out well, why is the app not working the way I want it to because you haven't updated the phone. And the worst thing you can do is update all your apps and then not have enough space to update your phone because your phone is the one that makes everything go around. And a lot of people do that. You're not even in a position to be doing the things that you're doing. You talking about getting a new car. Why are you talking about trying to get a new car and you, I'm sorry, you don't even have your own place. Like, what are we talking about? Like, you could, like, there's just, and that's just me. I feel like there's certain things, just in my experience, I feel like people need to do for themselves, and then you can update other things in your life. Like, I know so many people who, this is no shade, live your life, but they have a lot of luxury things. But then when it comes into, they have a lot of luxury items, I should say, but they don't have a luxury life. The things in their life are very how do I say this in a way of like, not even, I'm not even trying to be funny when I say this. If you watch my videos, y'all know I could be kind of blunt, but their life is just not giving luxury. You get what I'm saying? The struggles that they have for themselves, the things that they're worried about, the things that stress them, whether it's even other people that may stress them, right? The, per the reason why this person stresses you is because you, you live in a house. The reason why this person stresses you is because you need them. You over here worried about updating yourself in all these other areas, but you still dealing with stuff you don't even want to deal with simply because you haven't gotten yourself out of the basic situations. And so I think that's very important. You need to update your life the same way you update update your phone because if you do not update your phone it's going to lag you're going to be behind and then everyone is going to be doing all these other things and you trying to figure out why can't I do them why can't I do them girl you about five updates behind so I want you to ask yourself when is the last time you updated your life when is the last time you intentionally did something to help change your life or are you just going through the motions you just doing what you think you should do and living in life and feeling like you stuck and you stagnant you are stuck Come on, we on iOS 17.5. You on iOS 12. And you wonder why you don't enjoy the life that you live. You haven't updated. The next one. When a snake bites you, just let the wound heal instead of trying to find the snake and ask why. So I've had to realize this when it comes to time and when it comes to energy, right? When a snake bites you, when someone does something to you, let the wound heal. Figure out why does that thing bother you? Figure out why does that thing affect you so much? And also figure out what did how what ha, what thing how has that thing changed you? I would say, right? So for example, if, if your boyfriend was to cheat on you, are you about to go and cheat on him back? Or are you about to figure out why he cheated on you? Or are you about to you get what I'm saying? Or are you instead about to be like, you know what? I'm not saying not have a conversation about it. That's not what I'm saying. Have a sit down about it. But once someone tells you their reasoning for something, especially when it's not something that you would do, right? If you're not a snake, you're not going to bite. So a snake can explain to you a million times over and over and over again why they bite. And I'm still not going to understand it because I'm not a snake. So instead, use that time to heal. Instead, use that time to build yourself up. You notice how much that hurt you. That It got you losing weight. It got you stressed out. It got you. Maybe that's a sign. That instead, moving forward, you need to build a relationship with yourself that's so strong. And I'm not saying that, that that's never going to hurt you. No, that's going to hurt you. But also un build yourself up enough to know that I have myself. Build yourself a up enough to know if somebody hurts me like this again, I will leave. Build yourself up enough to know that I got me and I can heal my wounds and figure out ways to heal your wounds. Whether that's therapy, whether that's working out, whether whatever the case may be. But instead, we don't do that. We don't use that time period to build up on us and heal our wounds. Instead, we use that time period. But why did you cheat on me? But like, but like, whoa, whoa, you over here searching on a girl Instagram, trying to figure out what she got that's better than you, trying to figure out. And it will never make sense to you. Instead of looking for the snake, trying to ask them why they bit you, heal. Because it never, if you're not a snake, it will never make sense. And don't allow yourself to become a snake. That's one of the worst things I've seen people do is become the person that did something to them. Now you're a snake. I don't care how you turned into a snake. I don't care. I don't I don't mess with snakes. Now you a snake. You get what I'm saying? 
You can have a whole sob story of, oh, I became a snake because he bit me and I didn't want to get bit again. And so I... That sounds great, but now you're a snake. Instead of letting that wound heal, you turned into a snake or you use all the time and energy that you had to chase that snake and ask them why they bit you instead of using that time to heal. The next one, accept people for who they are, but place them where they belong. This kind of goes into the last um, quote, but one thing I had to realize about life is a lot of times we have conundrums in our head, right? Of dealing with people, of dealing with situations because we're like, why are you like this? Like, why, why would you do this to me? Or why, why would you treat me like this? Or I love you. I care about you. Do I not do enough? Do I? Accept someone for who they are. I think the worst thing you can do, the most time that you can waste in your life is trying to change someone. That's who that person is. I don't care what they say. Time over time again, they've showed you with their actions who they are. So accept that. Like my thing is, and I think it's kind of, and I don't know, I think it is kind of messed up as well too. Like I don't think we look at it as us being bad people or us doing a bad thing but if somebody is showing you who they are mind you who you are is a mixture of so many things it's your environment it's your childhood it's your genetics what you're basically telling that person is the person that you are is not enough you need to be more like me because the person that you are comes from your childhood comes from your environment and comes from your genetics so when someone continuously is showing you who they are believe them Stop trying to change them and make them more like you. Instead, place them where they belong. Delegate. I talk about this all the time in delegating friendships. Like everybody, every friend doesn't have to be your best friend just because you've known them for over 10 years. Every person doesn't have to be, oh my God, I'm cool with that girl and I think I want to invite her to my birthday, but I don't know if I should invite her. Maybe you shouldn't invite her if you're thinking that you shouldn't invite her. You get what I'm like, it, 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 because, but it's a thing of what we do is we label all people the same. No, you need to delegate individuals based upon the relationship. And the relationship for me goes based upon who the person is. There are some people who I genuinely love in my life and I accept them for who they are. But there are certain things I would never ask them to do. I would never ask certain friends who I've been friends with, who possibly I even did things with to ever go on a trip with me again. And it's no shade. It's no whatever. It's just, I accept who they are. Instead of being like, oh, when you come on a trip with me, you need to do this and you need to do that. And we ain't doing this no more. We ain't doing... That's who they are. Why are you trying to change them? Because you wouldn't want nobody to do that like to you. And all you are trying to do is make them more like you. Every time you try to change, I don't care what they told you. They People will sell you sweet nothings, baby. Because in their mind, it makes sense. Even though to you, you may say, but you said you weren't going to do this. And you said you weren't do that. But you did this. You did that. Baby, they mama did that to them the entire life. They daddy did it to the entire life. They grew up in a neighborhood where that was. And don't use that time going back to the wound and looking for the, the snake that bit you to try to figure them out. Instead, accept them for who they are. And if you choose to keep them in your life, keep them. Just don't put them in a place in a space where how they are will bother you as much. And if you cannot allow yourself not to be bothered with them, then maybe you need to take them out of your life. But we want to think of everybody like a project, right? How can I fix this person? How can I make this person more like me? But then we use the, the idea of, oh, I'm just trying to make them into a better person. I just want you to be better. I just want you to know you just want them to be like you. I'm all for helping friends. I'm all for helping people you love and you care about. But I had to learn I cannot change anyone. I can give you information. I can tell you about things. But you have to change you. So why am I sitting here trying to change you and make you more like me? The next one. No one cares. Work harder. This quote has actually, it's one that I heard before, but it's one that has affected me more so recently. Um, as many of you know, not with the whole thing again, most of y'all know I was a full-time content creator for four years, now I'm working my first job. And going into it, I always had this idea of, oh, well, even if I did have to get a job, I've been a content strategist and I've scaled a business up or been a freelancer and scaled it up and I have proof of this. Blah, blah, blah. I thought it was good I thought it was enough and then when I got into trying to get back into the nine to five field though I have had a job for a month now it was a thing of what I did I couldn't exactly figure out how it fit 
in the business world. I mean, like in the nine to five world. Like what I did was helpful for me. What I did was very niche. It was helping content creators grow on social media. But now what I'm trying to tell this person in a, in a retail job or whatever job, what I've done, for them it doesn't really make sense because they're like, yeah, this was great for you, but how can it help me? But I can sit here and cry about it. Like, what? I worked hard for all these years and I did this and I did that. Nobody cares work harder. I think we need to realize that if something is not working in our lives, it is good to pivot. It is good to change. But never use your past as an excuse to why you cannot get to your future. And yes, that is a very specific example, but it happens with all things in life. It can happen with you going through a traumatic upbringing. It can happen with so... Nobody cares, unfortunately. You could have recently lost your job because you, you got into a car accident and now you can't work and pay your bills. Your landlord is going to put a sign on your door after you're not paying your, your rent for a month that says eviction. But you, you're like, oh, well, it's not, that's not fair. I was sick. I was this. Nobody cares work harder. And sometimes, too, you have to realize it does not make them a bad person. Like, I get it to a certain extent if that did happen and they only did it for a month, okay? But at the same time, they still have to pay for the building. They still have to pay for wherever you're living. And they cannot tell the person that they're paying to, oh, yeah, well, this girl, you know, got into a car accident and she can't pay her rent. If that person don't care, then it's going to fall on them. Then it's going to come out of their pockets. And, yes, it is unfortunate that you did go through that situation, but you can't expect other people to also take the hit just because you're going through something. And that's why I always say nobody cares. Work harder. If you cannot get the things that you want out of life, you need to figure out how to create a life to get the things that you want out of this thing called life. There's this this podcaster that I listen to and he was saying how he now he creates three videos every single week. His first year he did one, second year two. He now has millions of followers, all this other stuff. And he said it was a a time period when he first started his podcast and he was saying how he he was going to start it but then he had like got in an accident something like that and he messed up his leg and he had to have surgery so he was on crutches he had a cast all this other stuff and he was like instead of using that as an excuse he just decided that okay I'm going to sit down and I'm going to create this podcast now before when he was up and able he had thought about doing it but then finally he was like you know what I'm going to do this thing Instead of using it as an excuse of, oh, I'm going through this situation, I was going to start this podcast, but then now I'm not going to do it because my leg and this and that, nobody cares. Because nobody cared that his leg was messed up. And now that helped him get to the heights that he is. He has millions of followers. He makes all this money, so on and so forth. I think he's even coming out with a book. But the whole idea behind it is the world doesn't care what you're going through. If he would have used the excuse of not starting the podcast because of his leg, he possibly wouldn't be where he is now. And I possibly would not know about him. You know what I'm saying? The world doesn't care what you're going through. So do not use what you went through as an excuse. Work harder. If anything, that should give you more push, more motivation, more I got to get this thing done. I got to do this thing now. Because I don't want this thing to affect my life for the rest of my life. I don't want this thing to be the reason why I don't achieve the things that I could have achieved or did the things that I could have done. Because I think the world owes me something because I went through something bad. It's messed up, but it's so true. The next one. In life, we must choose our regrets. This is one that I recently learned, and it's really been making me think because I've talked about it on the previous video, um, life lesson video. Make sure you check that out. Um, how in life, there's not really a good or a bad. There's just choices. And we look at them as good and bad sometimes because of the outcome but it's just a choice and one thing that everyone has in life similar to choices is regrets right if I choose to stay in the house and watch tv instead of going to the gym the next day I'm gonna be like dang I could have went to the gym I wonder how my body would have been feeling but equally so if I choose to go to the gym instead of sitting down and watch tv I'm gonna be like oh my gosh I wonder what happens on the next episode or I wonder so life is filled with regrets. And I think that's one thing that messes up a lot of people is because you try to dodge them as much as you can. But if you look at life like you have to just choose your regrets, it doesn't feel as, I wouldn't always necessarily say it doesn't feel as bad, but I could say it feels more normal. In life, what we try to do is make the best decision so we don't have regrets. But if I was to tell you every single decision that you make will give you a regret, how does that make you look at things now? Now it makes you just think, well, you need to choose your regrets. 
similar to if you choose to stay home and watch TV or you choose to go to the gym. There's a regret with both. If you choose to go after that job and not get it, or you choose to never go after that job and not know if you're going to get it, or you go after that job and get it. There's regrets that come with everything. And I think if you live a life of understanding, you have to choose your regrets. It gives you that, the mindset that you have more control over your life than you think. So you think you don't have control over your life because you think if I do this thing, I will regret this thing. And since I regret it, it was a bad decision. No, it wasn't a bad decision. It just was a decision. But the fact that you didn't do that thing, it left you a regret. And even the fact sometimes if you did do that thing, it leaves you. And when I say regrets, it doesn't always mean like, oh, I wish I didn't do that thing. Right. Similar to the TV and the gym analogy. It's not really going to make that much of a difference. Going to the gym for one day, watching one episode of a TV show, not that big of a thing. But over time, it starts to build up and show you who you are. Over time, it starts to build up and, and become a habit for you. And so I've been thinking about that lately, too, like with a lot of choices that I make, even when it comes to waking up in the morning, I don't want to get up. The time I ask myself, do I want to regret not getting to go back to sleep or do I want to regret not getting up and starting my day? And for me... When I say that to myself, I say, I don't want to regret not getting up and starting my day. I rather regret not getting more sleep, no matter how this is going to be the outcome. Because like I said, I don't know the outcome. Maybe I'm at work and I'm tired and I'm like, dang, I should have got a couple more hours of sleep. You get what I'm saying? Like there's always a regret with something. But I think with more choices, we just need to ask ourselves, what do you want to regret? Because you do get to choose your regrets in life. The next one. You can move through life at seven times the speed of other people by simply changing when you say you're going to make a decision from the end of the week to the end of the day. The idea behind this is that we wait too much time trying to come up with a decision, right? Well, I'm going to do this by the end of the week, or I'm going to decide this, or I'm going to make that phone call. I'm going to, if you decide to condense the time period in which you give yourself the amount of time to make choices, you will move on a lot quicker. See, a lot of people mess up life because they always give themselves so long to make a choice. Think about this. If you gave yourself a week to make five choices, right? At the end of the week, I'm going to make five choices. But there's another person who gave themselves a day to make five choices. Within a week, who has made more choices? Who has got more things done? Because to 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 achieve something, you have to start something. So there's so many things that you have not started. And those choices do not have to be large choices. Some of the choices are to schedule that doctor's appointment. Some of the choices are to pay off that bill. Some of the choices are to call your grandmother. But some of the choices are to look up that business plan, to ask ChatGPT, how, what are some good podcasts for, you know, the kind of things that you want to get into, to listen to my videos. There's some choices that can, that can make in a difference in that moment but there are some choices that won't make a difference until a month later a week later two days later whatever you know a longer time period later but you just have to ask yourself how long is it is it taking me to make choices and am I making extending all my choices later this week it takes you so much the person that changes from making all of these choices in one week to one day gets ahead of so many other people you're going to be so much faster than that person that waits. And I always say, yes, when I say that person, it does sound like another person. But also when I think about that quote, I think about you. You're going to make yourself faster at achieving the things that the prior you would take forever to achieve. You're going to make yourself faster at, at getting the things and figuring out the things that prior you would take forever to figure out. It's kind of like when you start something new and you don't exactly know what you're doing and then through trial and error, you figure out, I like this, I like that, I like that, I like this, whatever the case may be. But it takes time. It takes time through choices. And so you do yourself a disservice, in my opinion, by taking so long to make a choice, especially when you know there are choices you can make within five minutes, within 10 minutes. It's just a thing of doing them. That trial and error period now is longer for you. That waiting period now is longer for you. So on the flip side of that, the achievement side is longer for you. A lot of times the happy, happier side is longer for you because you're taking so long to get to these small things that will eventually lead to a big change in your life. So I say that to say, stop waiting, making all these choices. So at the end of the week, I'm going to do this. Or on Thursday, I'm going to do that. Or on Friday, why can't you do it today? If Especially if it takes five to 10 minutes, even 20. 
why can't you do it today? Because you simply don't want to do it because simply you're already on a schedule, right, of pushing things till later. And then the whole crazy part about that is you usually push those things till later. The next one. The upside of never trying is never having the pain of failure. I want you to understand the reason why it's hard for you to try for things, the reason why it's hard for you to go after things is because you're afraid of the pain. But there is an upside to it. I think a lot of times people always make it seem like, oh, you know, you're missing out on this life and you're missing out on these opportunities and you're missing and you're missing and you're missing. But also people don't see there's a benefit to not going after the things that you want to in life. The pain of failure, the pain of feeling like you could have, you know, did something else. The pain of feeling like if I would have just stuck with what I know, the pain of possibly losing money, the pain of losing friends, the pain of losing the life that you have now. That is what you could potentially lose in the quest or in the journey of trying to change your life. So... The upside of never trying is never experiencing failure. You can never fail at something if you never try. Now, you never can experience the upside to it, but you never are going to experience a downer side, I would say. Now, I'm not saying that to say that you shouldn't try to go after things. I'm not saying that to say that it's okay to stay stagnant in the place where you are, but I want you to understand you better because it's easy to look inward and feel like, what's wrong with me? I watch all these videos on self-growth. I watch all this stuff, but I can't change. There's no benefit of being where I'm at. I'm not happy. I'm not this because you're afraid. See, if someone was to tell you right now, more times than not, if you do this for a certain amount of time, you will have the definite thing that you want. Most people would do it. Like we look at life like, oh, all you have to do is do this and do that and you won't do it. It's also because no matter what someone tells you, no matter even if they did it themselves before, they cannot give you a definite answer that you will achieve that thing. And so you know that, you know, just because you work out for two months does not mean you're going to get your dream body. Just because you start a business in two years does not mean even you're going to be profitable. So that fear of not achieving that thing is what keeps you where you are. And it doesn't make it okay, but I want you to understand that you're trying to protect yourself. But I also want you to understand that you're doing yourself a disservice. That fear that you're having a failure is normal. That fear that you're having a failure is natural. And you're going to fail in life. You learn from failure. So if you keep convincing yourself that you're not going to try this thing, because what if it doesn't end up the way I want it to? All you're telling yourself is that i rather stay safe. I'd rather stay in a safe place where I know how everything is. I know all my struggles. I know all my problems. And I don't have to go through anything else. If that's the life that you want to choose for yourself, then that's the life that you want to choose for yourself. But I also want you to be honest with yourself and to tell yourself the reason why I'm not going after the life I want is because I'm afraid of not getting the exact life that I want. And I'm here to tell you, you're never going to get the exact life that you want. But for me, what helped me change is because I knew I did not want to have the exact life that I want now. And that's the promise that I had to myself if I didn't change, if I didn't do differently. I, I disliked the life that I had so much that I had to change. Even if I was to fail going after it or I was to stumble, I was to fall, it would be worth it. Because at least I know I never would have to, to live the life that I lived before the same way I lived it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And this is a series. So I also will link the playlist to the first video. I like these. I really do like these videos. So tell me if y'all want some more. Um, and also comment below what are some of your favorite quotes from the video. I feel like I learned so many quotes over time and I just don't share them unless like it has to do with the topic. So I like these videos. So I can just share quotes that have changed my life. And I think the whole idea behind all of these things is just to get the gears in your brain to start working, to get the gears in your brain to be like, wow, this is, you know, these are the opportunities that I have. Or this is what I could have done. Or this is how this situation works for me. And so for all these quotes, I usually would say, try to figure out how they work for you. Because it's one thing to listen to a quote and be like, that's a really good quote. That makes a lot of sense. But if you don't put situations that you're going through into these quotes, into the little chunks and additive, then to you, they still are just quotes. They don't mean anything. But they start changing your life once you start putting real life scenarios that you have went through into these things and saying oh this is how it can work for me and so you actually can eventually use them so thank y'all so much and i hope that y'all have a great one